Well, hello and welcome to another one of my screencast presentations. My name is Shardul and in this video presentation, I'm excited to share with you something that I learned about Git a few days ago. Uh, in particular, I'd like to talk to you about what is gated check-in and uh, what problem does it solve. Gated check-in is a way to stall uh, the commit, the, the check-in of your code into your repository if the code does not meet certain requisite standards. The standards could be the coding inconsistencies and the unit test cases that you might have. So if you were to take the example of JavaScript, you want to make sure that the script that we author is free from all kinds of uh, the linting, JavaScript linting. A bunch of rules could be uh, specified into a runtime configuration file named .js hint rc file and also coding inconsistencies like you want to make sure that the function uh, constructors always begin with the capital letters you could make you could specify all such rules into another file called javascript coding style dot js js uh, jcs uh, rc file and also like i said a bunch of unit test cases that you always want to make sure pass every time you perform the code check in so uh, uh, git allows you to, to achieve this by uh, providing you something known as a hooks. Hooks are nothing but scripts that get run at various stages of your Git interactions. Stick around and I'm going to show you exactly how you could use them to implement gated check-in in the Git distributed version control system. All right, let's go ahead and launch the terminal emulator, iTerm, which is my favorite terminal emulator as it lets me do such things as split the screen vertically and horizontally and such things. And also, as you can see in the title bar, it's currently running the Z shell, which is the modern version of the Bash shell. I'm going to CD into Workspace, which is where I have all my dev projects, and then quickly initialize a Git repository. And let's CD into Halo and inspect the contents of the, the Halo repository. As you can see, there is a folder named .git, as uh, any Git repository should. And I'm just going to list out the contents of the git hooks folder, which is where we are targeting all of our hooks. And the one that, are, that I'm currently interested in is a pre-commit hook. Now, bear in mind that when you initialize a git repository, it will give you these hooks by default. But for them to actually work, kick in, for them to actually kick in at various stages of the git interactions, the files will have to be renamed without the dot sample part of the file names. All right, let's go ahead and put together some code in this repository. And launch my favorite text, plain text editor brackets in this case. And as you can see, it, there are just two files in this uh, repository in this folder. Uh, hello, JS hint RC file is the one that I'm going to use to specify a bunch of rules that I could use to JS lint or JS hint in this case my uh, app.js file. It's, it's basically a uh, JSON file with key value key value pairs. Check for strictness. I'm going to make sure that there, there are no unused variables. There are, there are a whole lot of them. I'm just going to use just some of them for this demonstration. All right. So let's put together some code here. And one other thing, I have an interactive linter running in my in, in the brackets. As you can see, the tick mark here that always tells me that the code that I have here is uh, as per the rules that are specified in the JS hint RC file. So if I make a mistake and then try to save it, it will complain right there. Let's together, let's define a function called foo. And if there were a mistake, like I said, and I'm trying to save it without the semicolon, and 
the interactive linter complaints JS hint problem. So let's put that there and make sure that the the file complies with the rules that are specified in the JS hint RC file. Now let's go back to my command prompt to our command prompt here and I'm going to take help of node and especially I'm going to take help of the gulp task runner for the pre-commit hooks to work. So let's uh, type out this command and see what version of node we're working with here. It's 5.9.1 and the gulp version that I have, excuse me, 3.9.1. All right, so I'm going to require a package.json file, a JSON file where I will be specifying the configuration information for my pre-commit. So npm init will help me get a package.json file. So I'm going to go ahead and this produces the package.json file as you can see it here and I'm going to install a, a bunch of node modules npm install gulp gulp js hint js hint stylish and also js hint itself and I'm going to save them all as dev dependencies And because we are working with gulp, we need to have a gulp dot gulp file dot js file, which is the entry point for all the gulp tasks. So let's touch gulp file dot js. All right. So with those things in place, let's go ahead and define the gulp tasks. The name of this task is going to be lint. You can name it anything you want, but I just want it to be more relevant. It's a relative path to your JS hint.rc file in this case. It's in the same folder as the gulp file, so just it, it'll be just just JS hint.rc file. And you want it to fail that is exit with a non uh, zero code if uh, there were any errors okay. go ahead and save it and there are no linting errors which means that the code is fine and let's let's go ahead and deliberately make a mistake you know what before that let's go ahead and install another package the pre-commit which is what is the most important uh, node module, which is going to enable us to have pre-commit hooks. So I'm going to do an npm install pre-commit. Again, save that as a dev dependency. All right. So what this did was, in addition to installing the pre-commit module, it also went ahead and created uh, the the hooks inside the dot git and the hooks folder. Let's let's go ahead and examine that. As you can see, there's this there's this file here that's been newly created. That was created by the pre commit hook that we just installed. Now with that done, we just have to make changes to our package.json file to configure the pre-commit hooks. This being the JSON, all we have to do is add a new set of key value, value pairs for pre-commit.
no, we are, we will have this uh, task the script here. And optionally, you can make it run as a si in silent mode. Now let's go ahead and make a, uh, a deliberate mistake in our JavaScript code. We, we're just going to knock out the semicolon at the end of the console.log statement, try to save it. First thing, my plain text editor also complains. But if we still go ahead and try to commit this into our Git repository, it should complain. Commit. And sure enough, it complains. It complains that on line 5, column 29, there's a missing semicolon. Now, at this point, I'd like to let you know that there is a way you can actually override this, override this uh, pre-commit hook by simply by executing the same command with a hyphen hyphen no hyphen verify switch. As a matter of fact, let's do that. And as you can see, with that uh, switch, it doesn't honor the pre-commit hook, and it goes ahead and commits the code into the repository. Uh, let's let's try to fix the problem and then try to commit the changes and see it getting committed. I'm going to make this change now. Just a semicolon. First of all, my IDE is fine because it put a tick mark. Now get add, get commit, all good. So it works fine. So the commit went ahead and uh, it committed successfully only because all my code was lint free. So there you have it. That was the small demonstration on how to use git pre-commit hooks to uh, achieve pre uh, the gated check-in. Thank you for watching.